Hey, this is MassX with a brand new Starseed video. Yes, Starseed has dropped. I went hard on it for about, God, I don't even know how many hours it was. Um, just to go ahead and see if I liked it. Well, let's get into it really quickly. A lot of the cutscenes look straight out of the same people that animate Epic 7, which cracked me up. But it's not by that particular developer, publisher. Ironically, it's the people that do Summoner's War. Um, just as an FYI, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but definitely looks like a different game. Now, this game is really straightforward. And there is a ton of characters. And one of the nice parts about this game is they are just dropping characters. The rates are good. It requires a ton of dupes. There's currently one pickup banner. Then there's a, a recruit banner where you can actually put on a, a wish list. And so you set that wish list up for the characters you're looking for so you have a better chance of getting what you're looking for. There's a friend points recruitment and there's plugins, which we really won't get into as much right now since this is a cursory beginning video. But again, there is so much stuff going on with this launch event. And part of that, like I stated, is every day you are getting an SSR. So day one, Helen. Aren, Patricia, Ererica, if you just keep logging in, you are going to get all these characters. There's a progress challenge, there's a check-in calendar, the SSR exclusive event like I stated, uh, the invitation, this is a weekly event reward, a login event, a bingo event, There's the. this has to do with the limited banner, there's an analysis where you're going to be able to also get another SSR of your choice. You log in daily, you use data analysis chips, and basically you can start working on another SSR character. There's a Seaside Run event that's going on. And of course, there's Belbeta's gift. There is a lot going on in this game, as well as, of course, your pre-registration rewards. And again, this is a game I don't really see the, the importance of re-rolling at all because it takes so many dupes. It's pretty much irrelevant. But again, if you still want to re-roll on it, all you have to do is go into settings, account, you just make sure you're not linked up. And they have, as you can see at the bottom, a delete account area. So really simple stuff. If you want to re-roll, go for it. I'm not going to do a separate video for it because honestly, it's not like the Overlord game, Lord of Nazareth, that takes forever. So I didn't feel the need to do that. In this one, it's much more straightforward. But again, really, in my opinion, not necessary. Now, again, looking at your characters, like I said, I mean, this is only a day into the game and and the amount of characters you're getting very quickly is just nuts, okay? Now again, you have um, five characters that you're gonna be leveling up. Why do I say only five? There is a level sync area for your characters, so your top five that are the highest will sync with the remainder of your characters. So that's the good news. So that makes it a little bit easier for purposes of building multiple characters to use in different parts of the game. Um, it will go to 100 before they have to be at a higher dupe level to go higher. So right now, early game, it's not much to worry about. Preferably though, you're gonna put your um, purple SSRs in there and if any of them are already duped or better those are the ones you're going to want to start with in there so you can hopefully break through that level cap quicker when you get there. In addition your characters also um, there's different sets of teams of them where if, as you raise up their grades you are going to get more 
um, stats that are going to be able to work universally, ironically, in the game. So another area you're going to want to be focusing on or at least paying attention to early game to be able to build those stats up. And then there's your promotion area. Basically, if you've played anything with significant dupes, you know how this works. It's very similar to quite a few other games I've played through the years. So basically, if it's an SR, it takes two of that type of character to get it to SR1. If it's SR1, you can, as long as they're the same core color, you can go ahead and not have to use the actual character itself to get it to SSR and so on. They have this all broken down very simply, but as you can see, you can go quite far up to build these characters. And when you take a look at those characters, not only do you have level up, you have skills. So as you progress through, you've got an ultimate skill, your active skills, and a passive skill. Highly recommend um, early game. You probably activate your skill one and two, but you're really going to be focusing more on your passive and your ultimate skill. Now, there's also gear, so you can gear your character up, as well as one of the more important areas of this game with your character is your plugins. Now, what you really in a perfect world are going to do and there also is by the way in the banner section for plugins a wish list once you know your initial characters that you're going to use you're going to want to pick those characters for purposes of their plugins why because you get an exclusive effect for that particular character if you're using its plugin in it so it's really important so when you're looking at, for instance, Sia right now, when I look at, you can see at the bottom of the plugin, it shows you what has now been activated because I'm using her plugin. It has an increased ignore defense, which is actually nice, and an increased attack. So again, these are very worth getting, and all you have to do is when you go to your plug-in draws and you can get these tickets for free you don't have to necessarily buy them but you're going to go ahead and there is a wish list so you're going to want to put the five that you want to focus on first in here that's very important so keep that in mind as well as don't forget about the this particular recruit banner because it also has a wish list based on what i've seen from korean players that have played the game characters to focus on so if you want to use this as a starting guide go for it um, but like I said there's so many characters in this game that you're really going to want to see who you get SSR wise first if any of them are dupable and I think that's the best way to go early game as then as you progress and get more characters you can then focus on more of the finer aspects of the building your team now as you can see along the bottom there's guilds um, there's a campaign area where you, of course you have your tried and true tower you have a simulator mode for training and research you've got all i mean it's crazy the amount of stuff in here and of course you do have pvp as well as specific guild content so yeah they offer a lot out of the gate so let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of gameplay this is the main story the main story actually is not bad at all actually been quite enjoyable as you can see here the graphics actually look pretty cool you can go full auto you can go partial auto or you can just take auto off completely so let's go ahead and do a battle and when you start up your battle you're going to see right now um, an option for five characters I don't know if that expands or not I don't think so and you can actually set it up if you go into that tactics button down there based on your formation you will also get additional pluses so right now 
I'm in the quartermaster one I get extra HP by 11.5 percent as well as charge speed of up to 16 percent you also have a trigger the S trigger I'll show you in a second you can pick from a host of different ones available to you based on the characters you have once you're happy with your setup you can hit battle and you're off to the races in this game and then you can turn on and off if you want to see your skills I'll turn them on so you guys can see them you have the auto button in the bottom 11 you have normal times one times two times three speed but yeah graphics look great I mean the character designs look pretty good to me um, but is the game super incredibly difficult so far no it is not you can auto through most of it if you choose to but on the right hand side when we get out of these cutscenes for these ultimates well they did the kill so it's not going to make a difference but yeah look at nice and clean here as you can see there too there's an auto battle here so you can just keep pushing stages if you want to and it'll just which i absolutely love especially early on in the game because you know everybody knows how it is you don't get to the super hard battles till much later because they don't want to discourage people too soon in the game but if you look on that right side you're going to see the s trigger it also has an auto button off and on so you can choose to choose that you also have different camera angles that you can use like i said i mean it's it's a very clean game the interface is very simple it plays flawlessly um i've had no hiccups no problems since global launch so yeah it's a very fine-tuned game so if you like this type of game you're probably going to enjoy this version um, because it functions so well and it just looks nice i mean it really does and they're not chibis you know they're full size yes they're smaller but which is really nice honestly so and and i love love any time there's good quality of life in games because just let's be honest you know it's much easier to hit that auto than when you get stuck then you go in and then you start grinding it through without all the auto just it's just it is what it is and it just makes it so much simpler i hate having to always press the button every minute every minute you know every 30 seconds every one minute and 20 seconds based on how long those battles are and then like i said to speed things up now that you guys have seen um most of these cutscenes, at least for these characters is back on that bottom left hand side you can choose if you want it to go all the time once or not at all and you can just close it right out which is to me really cool so we'll play through this real quickly and then we'll shut off the auto but yeah let I me mean, look at that they just they, I don't know. what am I gonna say they look, they look good so let's leave that right now I'm still opening up stuff in this game currently and there's just so much to offer that's the thing but what I do want to really say is with this game, you know, really don't bother rerolling. It's not necessary. And then on top of everything else, they have this whole other area that will progressively open up as you go. There's a dispatch center for, what do you think? Getting more items. I've already used all my dispatches today. Um, you have the academy where you're going to be training specific skills for your characters so it's going to be very important and if I progress through with this game further I'm going to go into these specific areas there's this lab area where you're going to be able to get additional stats and we just opened up this right here this asnea plant and it looks like I got to activate it first so we'll do that. We're not going to accelerate it right now, but it looks like it's in their training facility. So again, lots to offer in this game. Just crazy amounts. One of the hints I got to say out of the gate is fill your friends list up as fast as possible. Why? Because you can get up to 60 of those friend points each day. And then you can use that for the banner. 
So see, only one day playing the game, got 60 already, maximized it. So basically every two and a half days, you're gonna be able to do a 10 pull, which is actually pretty fair. Now again, you do have to have a lot of dupes in this game, so it makes sense that they would do that. And on top of everything else we've talked about, there's actually already an event live, the Showdown Camping Lord, basically a story area exchange center, and of course, you can go ahead and play this. Now, I just, you can only get three a day, it, what appears so far, so I've already done my three for the day. But yeah, in the end, nice little game. And hey, by the way, you can customize your screen. And I'm the one that's moving her around right now. You can choose who you want on here. Just This game is very polished. Let's just leave it at that. But again, if you're going to give it a shot, this is the time to do it. Because honestly, um, they're giving away so much right now. And I, I, why not try it and just give it a shot? And if you like it after a few days, go with it. But I'm leaving this on the screen one last time for you. Um, as possible recommended SSR proxins, um, the characters for you to look at. And by the way, as you can see, there's red, blue, and green. There is also um, uh, yellow and black. Those are very difficult to pull. They can't go into the wish lists. Everything I've read about them is they're always top tier characters or very good characters, but they're very difficult to get. So most of your focus is going to be on that um, explicator, consolidator, and computator type groups, red, blue, and green. At least early on in the game, there will be banners with them, which again, will be nice. Um, at that point, those will be probably limited banners you will be looking to do, but they're giving away a lot of the currency, a lot of everything. And quite honestly, this limited banner, Sia, she's a solid character. She's been really my um, go-to push because I went ahead and pulled first on this. And then I've gone back now to the recruit Proxen's banner because of that wish list. So let me know if you're going to give this game a shot or not. With that, as always, please like or subscribe. It helps a lot. Have a great day.